Hi everybody, this is Sunny from Sunny Side Up Journals, and today I'm going to turn some trash into treasure. So, I don't know about you, but I have um, a lot of trash at home, and a lot of that is generated by my children. Um, they have, they, they love art. Uh, they're little little kids and they love painting and um, just using up so much paper. We have paper from school, we have paper that this is actually from years ago when my daughter was much littler. Um, but just, you know, she was playing around with paint. Um, and I found a stack of these in my, um, like under the couch <laughs> as I was cleaning and I thought, you know, on the one hand, it's trash, right? Like, it's, you can't do much with it. Um, and I do put a lot of it in the recycling. But, on the other hand, I don't know, my, my children with their little hands, with their little um, chunky brushes, came up with this. And I wanted to sort of save it in a way, make it more than what it is. And I think when it comes to paper, the best way to do it is to turn them into keepsakes, turn them into journals. So that's what I'm going to do. So this one is different from all the rest because it's, um, it must have been done on like some cheap watercolor paper, but it's like, it's thicker. It's got like cardstock or, or thin watercolor paper um, consistency, maybe like 120 pound paper. So I'm going to set that one aside. These other ones are all on sort of um, like flimsier paper, but still it has like a construction paper like weight to it. So it's not like printer paper. This is printer paper. This is this is nothing. It's not really particularly important, but I thought, you know, it was part of the stack, so I included those. Um, these are, some of them have like little drawings on top of them. <laughs> Most of them are just sort of random blobs. There is one that I wanted to show you that made me laugh because, oh, this one. So what I used to do, my, my kids used to create so many of these, I got bored and I started doodling on top of them. And you can see that at some point I, you know, turned, I thought, oh, that looks kind of like a bunny or that looks like a fish with its tail curled under. Um, that looks like a couch. So I just like doodled on top of some of these. And um, I remember doing this and it made me laugh and it made them laugh. So um, anyway, I thought I would include that in the stack. So I have a bunch of these papers and I think if I were to measure them, they look like nine by 12s. Yep, 12, nine, okay, good. So these are all nine by 12s. These are eight and a half by 11 because these came out of the printer. Um, but you know, we'll mix them in. And then I found this um, piece of a cereal box um, that doesn't mean anything to me in particular. Um, ooh, there's a coupon. Oh, but it's expired. Okay, then I'll just leave it on there. <laughs> um, thought I missed a coupon. Um, so this doesn't mean anything in particular, but it's already cut up because I made a different journal out of it. And me turning this into a journal will allow me to, you know, save one more piece of um, trash from going into the recycling. And we know that recycling is not a perfect process, right? Even if you put something in the recycling and the truck takes it away, there's a lot of energy, a lot of um, work, and a lot of times stuff you put in the recycling ends up in the landfill anyway. So why, why, you know, why not salvage this one little piece if I can use it? So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just make one signature. So I'm going to fold these in half and that'll just be a signature. And they're like, sort of, there's enough white space that I can use this to just take some notes or I can give them to my children and be like, hey, <laughs> I made this journal for you out of your old papers and they would love that. Um, and then this is going to be the cover. Now I thought about, using this as the inside, and then I could like make this the outside. However, a lot of times these coated boxes, boxes that were, um, that have this like, you know, 
um, commercial coating on them, they don't want to bend this way. See how there's like a lot of resistance? It just does not want to fold. That means that when I make a journal out of this, it's going to want to like pop open like this all the time, which is very frustrating. However, if I fold it like this, it has a lot more give. Like it wants to fold in this direction. Um, and I don't know the science behind it, or I don't have, I, I kind of know the science behind it, but I don't have time to explain it. Um, but that's the way that I'm going to do it. I do it by feel and I say, and I look at like, okay, that's, that's the way it wants to fold. Great. Okay. So I think I'm going to make this, um, the cover. I'm also going to, because this doesn't mean anything to me in particular, Rice Krispies, they were yummy, but whatever. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to cover that with this piece of thicker cardstocky um, paper and that way the cover of it will sort of match the inside of it. So um, I'm going to take a little bit of time and I'm going to um, uh, cut up the, the cover. Okay, so I have just cut a nine by, nine was the best I could do to just like get a little bit of um, the wonky edge off and then a little bit longer than 12 just so that it like, it's a little bit wider than the paper itself. So it's like 12 and a half. Um, so there's going to be like a quarter of an inch overlap if that makes sense. I'm just gonna find the middle of this sort of I'm gonna hope for the best and find the middle of it. Um, it's, yeah, like 12 and a half, so what is half of 12 and a half? Six and a quarter. Um, and I'm gonna take my little scoring tool here, my bone folder, I'm just gonna put little notches on there. The other thing you can do, if you can't see what you're doing, is let me just get some. There we go. Can you see it? Because I couldn't see it before. <laughs> Sometimes I make these notches and then I'm like, I don't, I don't know where they are. I'm kind of um, sort of like a go for it without thinking about things kind of person. Um, especially when it comes to art. And um, so I don't know if that flies with you. Sometimes I try to like provide measurements for the people who would be bothered by that kind of attitude. <laughs> um, but I don't always succeed. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, okay, so the task is to get this to stick to this. I don't love this border of like, okay, I'm going to get rid of this coupon. Um, I don't love the border of like, you know, serving size and rice and family size sticking out from around this thing. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cover it with a thin, just a layer of um, gesso so that I can um, have more of a blank slate to work with. And then I'm going to glue this down onto the cover. So I'm going to do that and then... I will meet you back here in a jiffy. Okay, so while that is drying, um, I think we will, let's deal with the papers first. Um, I have gesso all over my hands now. Um, so what I've done is I stacked these papers, um, I kind of interspersed these um, in between some of the painted pages. This one I'm gonna flip over. And made this the center fold. I think <laughs> since this one makes me laugh and it, it just gives me good memories, I think I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. Um, true bookmakers, um, and when I took like a real, not real, but you know, a more strict, a more um, 
rule-based book binding type class. Um, they do advise you to fold each one individually. Ain't nobody got time for that, so we're just gonna do it together without even measuring. That looks fine to me. I think it's, you know, again, I'm, I'm rescuing trash here, so I'm not gonna like overthink it too much. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm going to, um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bind with this ribbon. Um, ribbon is a lot slicker than waxed thread, right? And waxed thread is sort of what is typically used for um, book binding. What I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to take my beeswax and I think I'm going to try to wax the ribbon. This may go terribly. Um, I'm actually like worried that I decided to do this on camera, but <laughs> you know, you get to see like the the whole process. Um, okay, so I just ran it through the wax and it's actually, it took some of it. It actually did okay. Hey, you can wax ribbon. That's cool, that's cool. All right, so it's it's becoming a lot more stiff. You can even hear it. That it's got that like waxy coating on it now. Oh, <laughs> sorry about the funny squeaky noise. Okay. Ah. I actually, I actually like that. I'm not gonna put it through too many times. I don't want it to like get all, you know, you know, too tacky. So I'm gonna put that aside. And um, my cover's still drying, so while we're waiting for that to happen, I think I'm going to go ahead and punch holes in this guy. In order to keep it from moving around afterwards, I'm just gonna binder clip them here and here. And there's not a ton of um, pages in this signature, so we don't, and they're all relatively the same size, so we're not gonna worry too much about them shifting around or like trying to measure it out. Okay, so I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to punch this or like I'm going to bind it with the cover instead of punching holes in this and then punching holes in the other one and then matching it up because again let's just save time. Okay, so um, let's uh, come back with the cover and put it all together. Yay! Okay, so here's the cover. Um, I put a light layer of gesso all around the edge. I didn't go in the middle because it was going to be covered anyway, um, but I put it all around the edge like this um, just to sort of, you know, blend in some of the um, commercial writing all over it. Um, and already I think it looks a little better. Um, now, what to do with the inside? You could totally, I could totally leave this blank. I could even draw on it or whatever. But I thought, because I happen to have this right nearby, I, for making a different journal, I will use some of this fabric. This fabric was actually left over from um, something I made for one of my kids. So since this is a journal made from the trash that they produced, <laughs> the treasures, I mean, that they produced, I thought, why not use this fabric here as the inner lining, right? And what's kind of fun is that it also sort of softens it. This is a nice, um, super soft fleece and it just makes the journal a little bit more, I don't know, soft. And what if I even did that? What do you think? Should I have some of that soft edge, kind of almost like a bias? Then we would really cover that up. Oh, maybe I didn't need to paint just so that after all. Okay, I think it's gonna work. Let's flip it over and see if there's enough. Yes, yes, there's enough of this fabric. I'll cut it here and then I'll fold over the edge like this and then maybe I'll just sew it across. Yeah. And then we have this like soft edge on the outside. Cool, okay, um, good plan. Thanks for helping me with that. And this is what I mean by me making kind of decisions and not really planning stuff out and just going for it. That's what brings me joy. <laughs> so I am gonna use a ruler. I don't like using rulers, I don't like measuring, but this way I will have enough. You know, I sort of plan this out so that it's not too 
Dominic. Um, and I think I'm instead of the pinking shears, I'm gonna go with the flat um, and just cut along the line that I drew with pencil. And you're not gonna see it because again, I'm gonna be folding it over and making a border with it. Oh my, I almost cut my ribbon. <laughs> oh, silly, silly. Okay, all right. This is so soft. And it kind of goes with the whole like bluish, aqua-ish color scheme of this journal. Um, and I love that. Okay. Okay, welcome back. So, we have a completely sewn, completely encased cereal box with this hand painted by a, I think, two or three year old cover. And then I put that um, soft um, fabric on the inside here. Um, and, okay, so look. I'm not the greatest sewist and I don't plan and I don't clip um, very often. I know that I need to do those things and I know how to do them. I just choose not to most of the time. And it doesn't matter because this is not going to be one that is for sale. This is one that I'm just going to keep for myself. Okay. So here's the innards. This is the inside. And because this doesn't actually have a top or a bottom, I can decide how I want to structure it. And I think that... I think I kind of like this as the cover, personally. So I'm going to be sewing this in like that, and then it'll be a journal like this, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to sort of, you know, like match it up and I think I'm just gonna do a very simple three um, three hole binding and so I'm just gonna try to find the middle so I'm gonna use my grid here um, and the middle feels like there so I'm going to push it in through my signatures and out this hole. And I'm gonna make it pretty big. I'm gonna keep poking it through uh, because my ribbon is a lot thicker than say, you know, a piece of thread. And then I'm gonna go, so there's my hole, and then I'm gonna go, I don't know, like, hmm, oops, wrong end of the ruler. Let's say we go three inches. So that's just going to be my second hole. Boom. And then three inches this way. It's going to be right there. Move the ruler aside. Make sure I'm lined up. And boom. Okay. So now I have my holes. I think I'm actually going to like take my binder clip and I'm going to clip it to the border or the, you know, the cover so that it holds it still as I am sewing the signatures in place. Okay. Just make sure I can see those. Yeah, that's there. That's there. And that is huh, there. Okay. So, do you think I can do this without threading this through a, a needle? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to. Um, okay. So, I'm gonna go like that, okay. I'm gonna probably need my awl here. To shove it through. As soon as I see a little piece of it, then I'm going to grab it. Deal? Okay, I see a little piece of it. I'm just going to like fish it out. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to get it through here. What you could do also is to use like a little tiny crochet hook if you have those around. 
I've used crochet hooks for this purpose for kind of the bigger holes but since we're doing this in a very sort of um, um, okay. so if you're ever wondering how to do this it's basically like you're making a a pretzel okay so your hole is here here and here and so on the outside uh, on your binding once you pull it tight you're going to get this and this on the inside you're going to get this and then you're going to get both of the ends pull through the middle um, that you can tie okay you can do it the other way so that the tie is on the other side um, but I'm going to do it this way so that the tie is on the inside should I? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so this, now I'm going to send through this side here. And again, I don't really bind with a ribbon very often, so this is kind of a new experience for me. But it seems to be doing okay. And the, and the wax, you guys, that we... Um, that we ran this ribbon through really helped. I can feel that there is a grippiness to it and it's not like sliding all over the place. Um, all right, this is gonna be a tough one. Okay. Yes, I got it. <laughs> all right, so we have ribbon, ribbon. I'm gonna tug it tight. Apparently not tight enough. There we go. Good. Can sort of make it look kind of nice. Do, do, do. Okay. And I'm going to. You can either tie it here, or I've seen people also like tie it like this. Um, I don't love that look, so I'm going to just tie it here. Do just a standard box knot. Um, I went like this. And you can tie a bow if you want. I think I'm just going to sort of leave it. Okay. So here's the treasure we made from trash. Okay. So we have a cereal box on the inside that did not go to the recycling center. We have this piece of cardstock or, or watercolor paper that was painted on um, that makes the cover. We have, we didn't need to do the gesso <laughs> now that I decided to um, fold over the excess fabric, but um, I kind of like how that looks. Um, that nice little mint aqua cover and it just adds a little softness to it. Um, and then here are the pages. Look how fun that is. And, you know, I might journal, I might journal right on top of it. I might draw little pictures on the inside of those little circles. I might um, journal little messages on there or, or glue stuff down. It's um, a lot of fun. And then occasionally I have this sort of <laughs> writing paper. Do, do, do. Here's the centerfold the middle of the signature and then a couple of pages are a little blanker um, whiter um, more white space okay and some pages are like this others are like that others are more highly decorated that's a cool spread um, and it really helps that the fact that like my kids seem to have used similar colors across all of these pages also really helps keep it sort of cohesive. And then we have the end of the journal. And that's it. Isn't that kind of fun? <laughs> I basically took a pile of trash and turned it into treasure. And look, I may not ever use this. I'm certainly not going to sell it because it's, you know, it, it, you know, it's a little wonky. It's very wonky, but I can give this to my kids. Um, they can play it in it. They can write stuff in it. I can keep it and write stuff in it. But either way, now I've added something pretty to add to my collection of journals. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this process. Um, I had so much fun making it. And if you have any questions or if you have any um, tips or tricks or things that you like to do with your trash when you turn them into treasure, I would love to hear about them in the comments. Please subscribe and um, thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.